I tell you what, I, it's going to be a race, I think, maybe in this, for third position. Look at that front row. Met Kazao and Igor Fraga, of course, our Nations Cup champion from last year. Very much looking to retain that here, so maybe just a safe race for him. But Met Kazao is where he likes to be. We know he likes to lead from the front, so for him, it's just head down, try and ignore everyone behind you in your mirror, and just pump in those laps as quick as possible. Rolling starts for these drivers over the course of the 10 laps that we will have here at the Red Bull Ring. To remind you, the top three drivers will make it through into the grand final here tonight, or the semi uh, the semi final into the grand final. You should see there our hot pick, Mikhail Hazal, qualified second. He's the man who starts from pole position. Keep an eye out for him. Will he be able to retain that lead down to turn one? And crucially, will he be leading the race at the end of the 10 laps? But we are ready then to go racing. Semi final A for the Nations Cup here in Monaco is about to get underway. Mikazal will lead the field over the timing line as we go racing here in Monte Carlo. Igor Fraga ducks into the slipstream as Azal leads the field over the timing line for the first time of asking. They're all trying to get an advantage as they come down in towards the first corner. Rick Kaplan's out wide into T1. He got caught out unsighted by somebody breaking on and Hazal and Fraga has at a moment he's at a spin oh. at the outside of turn one and drops right to the back of the pack. That is an absolute disaster for Igor Fraga. Early doors here in semi-final A. My word, you want a drama, you got it. Our Nations Cup champion already at the back of the field. It's not going to be easy. He needs to be in the top three to go through, remember? And fourth to seventh for the Repichars. So a terrible start for our reigning champion, but a good one for this man, Mick Cazelle. Looking back, there is Ryan Darush behind him at the moment. The person who qualified oh, third in this race. And so, of course, up to second now with Fraga's adventure off at T1. That means Giorgio Mangano now is pulled up into third position in that last automatic qualifying slot but everyone's very quick right now the top five starting to break away from the rest of the pack at the moment but we're very early on this race as i said sip streams going to play a big factor so lots of racing yet to come of course all of these drivers in and amongst the pack are all qualified in different groups in different positions so you should expect a bit more of a pace difference uh, between them hence why that group initially has uh, begun to break away and speaking of breaking away hazal's trying to pull the pin and he's about six tenths of a second ahead of this man who we're riding on board with ray Andarouche, the frenchman has been very, very competitive so far this year. Got a podium earlier on in the World Tour event, but let's see whether he is going to be able to do some great things out there on track. A warning has been given to Adriano Carazza for his Amex, uh, Amex uh, sorry, his uh, moves down at T1. Here's Ryan de Roos we're riding on board with. Let's see what happened down at T1. Was there contact between him and Fraga? Nope, Fraga oh. just got unsettled on the curb there, didn't he? Yeah, just the curb. It's so easy to do that at T1. It's an amateur mistake, frankly, not one we expect to see from Igor Fraga, but that's it now done. He has to work his way back up through the field. Take a look on you onboard Karen, by the way. I'm a big fan of that. I, I enjoy that. But uh, Mick Hazal now has the difficult task of trying to break away from the pack. Now, interestingly, I'm going to revive his old drama here. Adam Swillow and Georgia Mangano are very close <laughs> on circuit. We know they've had blows in the past, and uh, uh, they, they, they told us that off track it was no problem at all. But I remember the reaction back in Madrid, if you guys remember that uh, uh, that race a couple uh, a year ago. Now it seems like longer. It's been, <laughs> it's been, a, long, it's been a long year. <laughs> for the DT guys, but uh, I'm wondering if Adam is thinking of that right now as he tries to chase down the Italian driver for that last automatic qualification slot. If you've just joined us and thinking, what are you talking about, Jimmy? It's four. No, we have three semi-finals today, so only the top three from each race will go through automatically, and then fourth to seven through the rapid charge, eight to 12, go home. That rapid charge as well is going to be very interesting. More on that a little bit later on, because there's some brand new content coming here tonight in the Nations Cup for the GT uh, Championships, but uh, we'll get back to that later on. Meanwhile, Mikhail Hazal just keeping that gap at a constant between himself and Ray and Darouche. Everybody settling down a little bit early doors here, Jimmy, just trying to get themselves, I think, into a bit of rhythm in these opening stages. You notice that through the last sector, uh, our leader, Mik uh, Mikhail Hazal, actually pulls away a little bit because uh, there's not much of a slip stream there. But as soon as we start getting back to uh, you know, T1 up to T3, I think it's T2 really, but apparently a little, a little curve in the straight in the corner. Um, that's where the gap starts to come down again because the slip stream comes back into effect. But uh, everyone having, yeah, just being quite relaxed right now. It's, uh, I'm, I expect it's a bit more aggression than this. Maybe they're trying to save the tyres a bit. That could be it, and to be fair, they've got a lot to lose early doors here than they will have to gain at this particular point. We saw that with Igor Fraga, with that mistake that he made uh, on the opening lap at the opening corner as well. So let's see whether he is able to turn his fortunes around. In terms of the lap times, Igor Fraga, well, he's been able to get the bit between his teeth, and he's setting fastest lap after fastest lap in these opening stages. So he's going to have to try and make a good ascension through the field to at least get into P7. Otherwise, he could be out 
in these opening stages. Yeah, I think so. And uh, that's definitely going to be something we need to keep an eye on. He is definitely gaining on uh, Kevin Pound. And, and when, once he gets onto the back of this pack, he'll start going through a bit quicker, I think, because of the of effect now. Um, again, a reminder, Igor Fraga, our champion from last year, currently, if the race ended, would be out of the competition in the first semi-final. So that is pretty crazy to think, but a long way to go just yet. Mikhail Zal still not able to pull away from Brian Rouge in front. George and Mangano is still on third. Adam Swillow has pulled away a bit from Sugawara. They're a bit closer now. He seems to be a bit quicker from the midsection of the Japanese driver. And now these group three cars, they do have a little bit of downforce to them. So going for the middle, uh, midsector, you might get a tiny bit of dirty air, but it's not quite as extreme as, say, the Red Bull X 2019. So coming over the line now to start the fourth lap. We're on board with Adam Sasuilo, currently in fourth position. I love this new onboard car. It's a bit more involved, I think, than the static one. It gives us a real uh, feel of what the drivers and what they're looking at. I mean, of course, in game, the, the camera is static. But you, when, when you're driving around, your eyes move around a lot. So it kind of simulates that somewhat. Point of vision is everything, isn't it, as yeah. well? It, you know, it really helps when you're looking through a corner. It gives you a better idea of uh, where you've got to go. And you'll see that here with Adam Sassuolo, that You can see the eyes of the driver. They're moving towards the inside of the corner to try and get as better line as possible through there. And uh, it just opens up the corner, makes it seem a little bit less tight. It works very well. Uh, here tonight to give you an idea of exactly what these drivers are going to be going through, where they are going to be looking on track. So Fraga just picked up a penalty, picked up a cut track penalty, and he was only about uh, nine tenths behind Kevin Pounder, but now I catch back up for two seconds. It is not looking 1.8 seconds now. This is not looking good for Eagle. This is not looking good at all. Five and a half laps remaining, Jimmy. Could we have the reigning champion out in the first race of the night? It's looking that way. That penalty, I think, has sealed the deal. But, you know, stranger things happen to see. We might get someone get brave and maybe uh, have an incident in the midfield. We will wait and see. And I'm wondering now, if I were in the boots of Ray and Darush or Giorgio Mangano, I'm going through to the final right now. Do I want to push for another position? Do I want to try and get by and, you know, just really solidify that? Or am I happy where I am? But also bear in mind, Swillo and Sigawara are there also in the same form, so it's that risk over reward ratio isn't it that's a difficult thing to say too many r's in there but uh, it, it really is worth bearing in mind you can see Giorgio Mangano closing now onto the back of the Frenchman as they go through T1 riding that outside okay. curve this is where he'll have the slipstream here Giorgio Mangano will he think about making a move Randaru surely is going to go defensive he does pull over to the right hand side of the track but will Mangano be able to get a good enough run coming down into T3 then hard on the brakes we go no moves being made there for Mangano nice and late on the brakes for Darouche getting himself settled up very nicely uh, through that particular corner but it's very interesting to see how it's all playing out between these wilds meanwhile in the background you saw Benjamin Barda and Jose Brea going hammer and tong as Adriano Carazza muscled his way through into P9 we only caught the back end of that one was there any more contact between Carazza and Barda because those two uh, well they've been running very close on circuit and don't forget that Carazza had that warning after the first corner so it is worth bearing in mind if he does have another similar incident and he's now inherited seventh place as Kim Long Lee has gone tumbling down the order into P12. We didn't see what happened there either on track at the time. Hopefully we'll be able to get you a replay. The advantage here for Igor Fraga is he now inherits uh, P11, but it's all gone wrong, sadly, for Kim Long Lee from Hong Kong, China. He's now down in 12th place. Here's what happened, Jimmy. So here we are then. Uh, it's Karatsa and, oh, I think he... I, he lost on his own, didn't he? I don't know. I'm not sure if he was held off there by Karatsa or not. I think he started to slide and Karatsa just didn't really react to it. Uh, we'll see if our stewards think of anything to that. Uh, but right now, the order remains unchanged. I've got to say, quite a quiet race outside, of course, uh, the uh, the Fraga spin at the start. A very stern looking uh, look on Fraga's face compared to Mick Cazal. Such different driving positions. You see, Fraga is upright and alert, whereas Fraga, I'm uh, sorry, whereas Cazal, sorry, is there with his drink in his hand. He's got his one hand on the wheel. He's chilling out. <laughs> Cruising uh, along with the hip hop blast yeah, in the stereo. He's, he's loving it. So <laughs> then there he is right now, just looking like he's completely at home and just chilled out. The thing with Mick Carlisle, he said as much on social media earlier on this week, this is his last chance, he said, to win the world finals. He needs to keep a calm head. I've never seen him as focused. Julia mentioned it earlier on in the broadcast before she came over to us, and she's absolutely right. He's looking so focused, so controlled and calm, and I think that that's the thing we've seen with Mick, is once he gets his rattled, he gets his head out of shape, it sort of costs him a lot. Well, here's a great example of that. Of course, we uh, went out for dinner last night, and Mick said, I don't want to be here. I want to be out. I want to be at home in my hotel room and focusing. I don't want to be here. So, you know, this, that's not what we're used to. So, it's really good to see him putting that effort in. I think he's very serious about this. This onboard camera is great, by the way. And as you can see, 
building the gap for the, the middle sector. And Kim Long Lee gets a penalty there. So uh, the stewards must have seen something that we didn't. Of course, they have access to full telemetry, so we can only record it from one angle. Uh, but Kim Long Lee, as well as being nine seconds down, gets a penalty too. Igor Fraga is closing right up onto the back of Kevin Pounder here for P10 as well. He's now just a tenth of a second behind. And keep an eye out for that gap, because look, it's very close between that and the lower half of the top ten. So he could be potentially ready to try and move his way up into P7. Here we are riding now on board with Igor Fraga out of the final corner. He's only got three laps now to do it here in the uh, Red Bull ring in these Toyota Group 3 supercars. Down in towards turn number one we go and Fraga, well he's a man, he knows how to race under these conditions, he knows how to race under pressure, he does it in real life and he has got a lot of pressure to at least secure his place in the repercharge here, Jimmy. So a quick reminder, P7, see the, and the heart rate up, there you go, that's not like Fraga, so he is, he is flustered right now and this is, this is interesting. Uh, watching this and in front of him Benjamin Banner and Breyer having a bit of a fight there that's going to slow everyone back up and hopefully for Fraga of course give him a bit of an opportunity but this is not what we're used to seeing it's like a bit of morbid curiosity watching this it's uh, it it's interesting to see the other side of things when things aren't going so well Pounder going defensive there on the inside and Carazzo has been given a three second penalty so they must have also given, they must have looked at it, oh, that's interesting, but Carrax is now going to drop back to well, P10. P exactly, P8 is now what he needs, isn't it? So th that's the thing there for uh, Adriano Carrazza for uh, that contact. So this is all going to be turned on its head, and there is that penalty. This is where he will begin to serve it here, Jimmy, and he's going to drop right to the back of this little gaggle and frogger there into the back of Kevin Pounder. I think he was just running a little bit slower there through uh, uh, that corner was Kevin Pounder, and Frogger was just a bit unsighted. But, uh, well, this is going to get very interesting indeed as Carazza goes tumbling down the order, and indeed Frogger goes up into P10 very, very close behind Kevin Pounder. He's so desperate to get by, and I think, you know, uh, you're out there to race, definitely, but why defend P9? You're going home at this point you want to be trying to focus on catching the guys ahead i think he's maybe trying to drop into the sit stream here but what this is very this is uh, odd to see i must say but uh yep fraga still in p10 he still needs to get ahead of his group if he wants any chance of going any further of course meanwhile front of the field Mick kazao's gone up to a second so he's really starting to put away now we're on board with igor fraga we have kevin pounder in front where he has been for the last few laps kevin pounder looks like he's gonna just drive down the middle of the road Igor, the last second dives to the inside Right up the inside then of Kevin Pounder, he goes and Pounder tried to turn in there and there was a big Fraga on the apex, so no, nope, no room at the end there. Fraga goes up to P9, which means now only two positions between him and the Repercharge, which are these guys in front, of course, Benjamin Bader right now will be defending that place with his life and Jose Brera in front will be trying to get that off him. They all want to go through, but of course this man has the world on his shoulders at the moment. Can he pull this off? Well, this is very exciting, and if you told me this is how it was going to play out at the start of this evening, I wouldn't have believed you, but Igor Fraga has got it all to do. Jose Breyer and Benjamin Barda in the front of your shot, and Barda doing a really good job here of just not getting too flustered whilst it's all kicking off behind him. He's driving very well indeed, but uh, the big talking point, of course, is Igor Fraga. You can see there Barda going defensive, coming out of that corner, trying to break the toe of Jose Breyer, the Spaniard, as they come down into the penultimate corner then. So, speaking of penultimate, two laps left remaining here. It is all to play for, for this final spot in the Repercharge, and it's anybody's guess at the moment as to who is going to make it through. I'll tell you what, if his heart's beating, mine's beating faster. My word, this is so strange for us to see. I know I keep saying that, but it's just a, a little bit uh, unbelievable right now, and uh, it's all to do for Fraga. Meanwhile, back at the front of the field, you see his has got a small gap there, but Derouche has fallen back a little bit to Giorgio Mangano and Adam Tosuilo. Now, out of these three, Adam Tosuilo is not going to be going by. Lewis Hamilton there in the bottom left hand corner watches on, and Ryan Derouche is overtaken by Mangano, pushed wide, and Tosuilo forces his way up the inside. They're side by side, banging door handles now down towards T4. Adam just about has the inside line. I think, yeah, Ryan just has the overspeak and get back front and uh, defend the position but that was almost rain going from second to fourth. Whilst that was kicking off Jimmy, Igor Fraga was given a penalty for one reason or another he's now down into P10. It's gone from bad to worse here for Igor Fraga with fewer than two laps now remaining it's all kicking off for the final spot automatically in the grand final at the moment it's Rayan de Roos but Adam Tosuilo the Briton is pushing him all the way as we now ride on board here with Rayan de Roos and I think that uh, Igor Fraga's penalty I'm just being told in my ear from the race stewards was because of a corner cut so that was a half second penalty that he would have served. Ah, there and you go. There you go. A flash of the lights, meanwhile, for Adam Sosuilo as he tries to find his way back past Rayan Darouche here. Onto the last lap we come in semi final A. 
I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be exciting. So this is all it for Adam Swillow now. He has the opportunity to go straight through to the final, and he'll want that bad. I can tell you that now. We come on to the final lap here of semi-final A. It's Mangano, Derouche, and Swillow. One, two, three, or two, three, four, I should say. And uh, Mick Hazal out in front, seemingly going to win it. But this is all in Ray and Derouche's hands right now. If he can defend just one more lap, from the Briton behind, he'll be going through to the grand final automatically, whereas Sosuilo will be going through to the repertoire. We're running out of corners. Sosuilo having a sneaky look there on the inside. Ray Anderous gets a good drive out of it, but Sosuilo's was pretty good. He'll have the advantage of the slipstream, but will Ray Anderous in front as well? So keep an eye out for it as they head down in towards T number five then. This is going to get very exciting and probably pretty interesting in the midfield part of this lap through into the right hand we go you can see Sosuilo taking a really nice tight line through there rides up onto the back of Ray Anderouche will he think about a move into the next left hander will Derouche defend that line up the inside we go for Sosuilo he takes a lunge but Derouche firmly shuts the door against the Briton and he retains third place for the time being through the left we go then and Sosuilo he's going to have to surely have a dive at the penultimate or the final corner to try and make it through but Derouche is doing a fantastic job of defending as is Matt Mangano in front, and speaking of doing fantastic jobs, Mikhail Hazal is leading the way very commandingly indeed here. Well, he's tried as hard as he can there, Adam Sosuilo, but I think it's just a bridge too far, but out of the final corner and over the line to take the win in semi-final A, it's Mikhail Hazal who's on top. Giorgio Mangano finishes second, Ray Andarouche in third. Adam Sosuilo kept him honest right until the end, but he finishes P4, and making it through to the repertoire is Benjamin Barda. Breyer, Karadza, Fraga, Pounder and Kim Long Lee will go no further here tonight. You see there, Mick looked over and says, what happened? And the shake of the hands there, and that is that. Done and done. Our Nations Cup champion from 2018 is out. Straight and not just, away. Not just out of tonight, out of the competition in its entirety. So we will not have a double world champion here. I mean, we will not have Igor Fraga fighting for that championship even, to a point. That is unbelievable. I, I, honestly, I, I'm lost for words, Jimmy. I, I, you are too, I think we all are really here, and we're so used to seeing him doing so well. You can see Super GT, Black Panther, and John Noble are gonna be down uh, talking to Julia in just a few moments time, so keep an eye out for that. She'll be, uh, they'll be joining her up on the stage, but what drama, semi-final A, an yeah. Eagle Frog at the reigning champion out. So I'll be interested to hear our uh, YouTubers' opinions there. Those YouTubers are rubbish, really, aren't they? Never, <laughs> never, never, would, never would trust one. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, it, use, to use one of your phrases, Tom, big drama, my if, word. Well, like, yeah, if, <laughs> my word, exactly there, Jimmy, right back at you. But if you'd had a tenor on that at the start of the race, you'd be a very rich man by now, I'll tell you that.